Welcome to my channel. This is today's episode of Daily News Clips. But before I get into that, I do want to thank you for coming to my channel and for watching my videos. I really, really do appreciate it. Thank you very much. I'm going to insert this into my uh, Daily News Clips video because I forgot to do it. And I made myself a promise I wouldn't forget anymore, so here I am. This is the shirt I'm wearing today. It just says Stove Bolt. If you don't know what stove bolt is, it's a term that was used to describe old Chevrolet and GMC trucks. Uh, I, I, the last 20 years of my career, I worked in computer security, and I wouldn't consider myself an expert by any stretch of the imagination, but I'd say I'm probably somewhere between an apprentice and a journeyman when it comes to computer systems of all kinds, Unix, Mac, Windows, all of them. Um, and for, uh, gosh, 25 years now, I've been the server admin for StoveBolt.com. If you're interested in old StoveBolt and GMC trucks, you might be interested in going to that website, StoveBolt.com. Uh, it's a hobby website, and there's a discussion forum there where you can uh, talk about your truck and how to fix things and how to make it snazzier and how to fix it up the way you want to fix it and you can find parts and you can trade parts and sell parts and buy parts and it's all free and like I say I've been the server admin there for about 25 years now I also manage another website but that's separate from this one uh, but it's stovebolt.com I'll put the link in the description of the news video and I'm just inserting this because I forgot to do it and so uh, I promised I would, and so here I am doing it. Stobolt.com, okay? I have four items in the used news today, as usual. This first one, titled Total Vindication for FBI Whistleblower, who questioned Ray's narrative on January 6th. Ray is Christopher Ray, the director of the FBI. Now, if you're not familiar with what goes on in the United States inside the FBI, basically what happens when you're a whistleblower in the FBI is they revoke your security clearance, so you have no ability to do any of the work that you're assigned, and then they suspend you without pay. And that's not how it's supposed to be done. They're supposed to be protected, but that's how they do it in the FBI. And so this guy, named Marcus Allen, uh, was suspended for two years with no pay. Now you can imagine what it's like for somebody to not be paid for two years while he fights through the legal system, which is slow and ponderous and takes forever to try and restore his rights. So very few people have the fortitude and the ability to fight like this, but this gentleman did. I'm going to read you just one little part of it. This is a total vindication for Marcus Allen in what appears to be an unprecedented move. The FBI has completely backed down and provided everything that we had asked for on behalf of Marcus. Tristan Levitt, president of Empower Oversight, a whistleblower advocacy group that represents Allen, said in a written statement. Empower Oversight filed Allen's appeal in October 2023 based on evidence contradicting the FBI's claims from its own files. Wright finally won one, W-O-N-O-N-E. Wright finally won one, and we couldn't be happier for Marcus and his family, Levitt said. They have seen the worst side of our federal government and have come out on the other side. It's a testament to, testament to Marcus his belief that Wright would eventually prevail, and the unwavering support of his family and friends. In a letter Tuesday to the DOJ's Horowitz, Levitt called the Bureau's May 31 decision to reinstate Allen's security clearance a vindication. However, some members of Congress uncritically repeated those accusations, and the press widely amplified them at the time, Levitt's letter says. Your inquiry has undoubtedly gathered additional important context to help set the record straight. So Mr. Allen respectfully requests that you release that information 
in the interest of transparency and accountability. An interesting situation because there are very few, I'm aware of some others, there are very few, very few FBI agents that can afford to go without pay for two years while they fight their case and they don't know if they're going to win or not. They really don't. I mean, the FBI is tenacious at fighting against whistleblowers. That's not how it's supposed to be. That's not how the law is written, but that's how it's done in practice. And it needs to change, clearly needs to change. This next article, we're returning back to the Trump story. And as I've said before, I, I'm, I, I don't like getting into politics. Uh, I don't like discussing either party. Uh, I don't give money to either party or to individual politicians. I've never been a member of a party except I joined the Libertarian Party for a very brief period of time and then after I read their, through all their documentation, I decided, no, I don't want to be a part of that. Uh, so I, I try to be as apolitical as I can, which is tough. I mean, we all have our biases, okay? And I have mine. Uh, I believe in limited government. I believe in freedom. I believe in making the government as small as possible so that it can do the least amount of harm. But anyway, uh, this the recent uh, what we call lawfare against uh, President Donald Trump has been unprecedented in the history of America. And the interesting thing to me is that there are people on the what they call the left, and I've talked about this yesterday. Uh, I don't believe in left-right either. I believe that there's an, a linear scale from anarchy to tyranny, and all governments fall somewhere in that range. But anyway, all that aside, uh, a Supreme, the Supreme Court may prevent irreparable harm to Trump, says Yale law professor. Now, this guy is what is called a liberal, liberal constitutionalist, so, but he is a law scholar. Okay, so he knows what he's talking about. And he says, but according to an influential constitutional law scholar at Yale University, legal scholars and journalists got the story all wrong. Trump is not, in fact, a convicted felon. You're not convicted unless the judge enters a judgment of guilt against you, explains Yale's Jed Rubenfeld. And the judge still has the power to throw out that verdict and enter a judgment of acquittal. Rudenfell acknowledges that it's very likely that Judge Juan Merchan will enter that judgment of guilt against Trump on the same day that he issued sentencing, July 1st, 11th. But Trump's lawyers can still sue New York City District Attorney Al Alvin Bragg and other state actors and ask the judge, the federal judge, for an emergency temporary restraining order halting Judge Merchan from entering that judgment of guilt until the federal courts have had an opportunity to review and rule on the serious constitutional argu arguments that exist here. If Trump's lawyers file in a federal district court, they would ask for a TRO, a temporary restraining order, on an emergency basis, he told public. The court would set a briefing schedule and ask for a hurry-up schedule by July 11th. If the court said no, we're not issuing a TRO, you could appeal to the Court of Appeals, and then whatever the court did, you could appeal to the Supreme Court. Said Rubenfeld, you could even go over the circuit court to the Supreme Court. So this guy is saying, look, there's a number of constitutional questions involved in these cases, and they need to be reviewed. And, and a number of legal scholars have said that, and I mean, I'm not a legal scholar, but I agree with them. I think there are some serious issues with the, these cases against Trump that involve constitutional issues, involve political issues, that involve issues that never should have come up in courts of law in the United States. But there are certain people, partisan people, that are using the courts to try and get their way. And on a side note, uh, I'll see if I can find the link for it. Uh, in the Georgia case against Trump, the appeals court has now put the case on hold until October. So uh, that case probably, by the time appeals are all done, 
uh, will not even take place before the election, so it's basically a moot point. That's just some news about what's going on with Trump and the and the courts and that kind of stuff. It's it's it is such a mess. It is such an absolute mess. And this fall, we get to vote for a doddering old fool or an asinine old jerk. <laughs> That's our choices. Yeah. Ain't America great, folks? Ain't America great? Here's the next article that I have. Top Republican, Republicans uncover records allegedly showing FBI obstruction of justice, re Iranian Islamic extremist terrorists under Obama and Biden. Now, I didn't highlight anything in this article. It's, it's a fairly brief article, and it links to some other articles. But I, I brought this, I bring this up because I, I, I just, I, I can't understand it. Why are the politicians that we elect to office in our country always working against us? This is how I think America's foreign policy should work. Number one, we should only only ever support countries that are Democratic or Republican in their political nature. We should never support tyrannies, uh, oligarchies, communism, any of those things that are against freedom. We just should not give them a dime. Screw them. They don't deserve our tax dollars. Okay? That's number one. Number two, when America gets involved with another country to help them out, say giving them money or giving them personnel and aid to try and help them solve some problem, it should be done from a position of humility on the part of America. We should not be going into other countries and telling them how to run their country. And far too often that's what we've done. That's what we did in Vietnam. We tried to tell the Vietnamese how to run their own country. And the, the South Vietnamese government said, no, screw you, we're not going to do that. And so what do we do? We had him assassinated. This is insanity. It is absolute insanity. It is not the way to run a country. It is not the way to run someplace that claims to be the beacon of liberty to the world. And somehow, some way, we got to fix this. We really got to fix this. Because the people we're putting into office have zero respect for us or for anyone else in the world. They're only in this for their own good. And finally, the last thing I have today is a, a headline, Woke Hollywood Panics, People Are Not in the Movie Going Habit. This is an interesting story. The domestic box office is down 24% compared to last year and 42% compared to 2019, the last pre-pandemic year. And yes, Hollywood is panicking, but Hollywood said the syncophatic Hollywood media are still lying. Excuse me. But Hollywood and the syncophantic Hollywood media are still lying to themselves and to us about the reason why. We are concerned, one studio insider told the far left Hollywood reporter. People are not in the movie going habit. Yeah, they're not in the movie going habit because movies suck. That's what's killing movie going. Movies suck. Ever since Hollywood went woke, and we're talking five dreadful years now, more and more people have wisely given up their movie going habit. <laughs> yeah. So. That's the news for today. As always, I appreciate you coming to my channel. I'm thankful for your presence, for your viewing, for your support. And I pray for you that you will have an abundant life, that you will live a long time, that you'll be healthy, that God will keep you safe from harm. And most of all, that you'll be born again if you're not already. I pray for the same thing for every single person that you love. More than anything, I pray that you will be anxious for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, you will make your request known to God, and the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus.
This is the Vietnam era vet out.